recognize uh, Mr. Newhouse. Thank you, Chairman Joyce, uh, Director Johnson. Thank you for being with us. And I, too, want to thank you and the men and women that are under you for the hard work that you do. Um, so I'm going to return to one of the subjects that was already brought up. Uh, as, as you reported last year, uh, this administration removed uh, 72,000 and some immigrants. We've gotten some feedback here for some reason. I think you can still hear me. Yeah. Um, then that does not include Title 42 um, removals. This past December, 250,000 plus people were encountered by the Border Patrol. Um, so removing less than a third um, of the number of encounters in a single month uh, took an entire year. And that's on top of a record-breaking year of 2.76 million encounters. So being in charge of removal orders and removing uh, immigrants, uh, a couple of questions. How would you justify that this posture benefits uh, border and national security? And this is, is this a sustainable posture? The administration repeatedly has said that those without lawful asylum claims will be swiftly removed. So can you tell me today that swift removals are happening? And also, uh, why aren't we doing more uh, to at least remove the, the known criminals and the repeat offenders? Good question. Um, for In terms of swift removals, I would argue that we are doing it for those that are detained in ICE custody. Um, Folks that have been following this work for a long time, you know, it's, uh, you know that that's typically where the, the bulk of our removal orders come from, and it is extremely difficult to remove individuals from the, the non-detained docket. Um, I, I do not think it's sustainable, um, but I also do not think that we that there's enough detention capacity in, in, in the private sector or that exists for us to detain our way out of this. I think that there are a number of efforts that are underway. The discussions with the Colombians and the Panamanians should go a long way. Um, we're, we're certainly asking for additional planes and resources so that we can fly more removal flights uh, more quickly, uh, more often to some of the countries that we're getting hammered the most on. Uh, so we think that too will certainly uh, help us um, you know, get some of these folks back to their home countries quickly. And in addition to Border Patrol creating uh, uh, some, some, some efficiencies and doing some of the credible fear screenings in their custody, ICE has also identified nine facilities where we're going to try to get people through the credible fear process much quicker than it's typically done in, in, in prior years. And hopefully that'll just help us be able to sort of cycle through those beds much quicker at those nine facilities and result in more removals. I appreciate those suggestions. Um, the other thing I want to talk to you about, ask you about, is fentanyl. Um, my understanding is that a, a small number of vehicles, cars, trucks, uh, are inspected, mm -hmm. uh, but we're confiscating a huge, huge amount of, of fentanyl. And, and due to the severe damage we're seeing in our country, I'd like to know, realizing that CBP is primarily responsible for those inspections and that you're called in, I guess, after the fact, um, the question remains, how are we as a country going to get a handle on this? Um, essentially, who's, who's going to take ownership of this problem? I think the American people want to know uh, what's it going to take. Uh, so I'm pleading with you, tell me what, what we can do to stop this scourge of, of drugs at the southern coming in the southern border? Well, as you mentioned, I mean, CBP is at the ports of entry. They're, they're conducting the inspections. We have deployed a significant number of HSI agents to the border to assist. Uh, you may be familiar with Operation Blue Lotus, yep. where we've sent a, a number of folks to two ports of entry. Uh, there, where just in just over 30 days, we've seized 8,000 pounds success, sir, yeah. of narcotics, uh, 4,000 pounds of which was fentanyl, uh, which just goes to show you: if you throw more resources at this problem, you'll you'll get some some big wins. Um, I think HSI is probably best situated to to sort of you know tackle 
to combat and dismantle the TCOs that are responsible for fentanyl, uh, particularly our, our relationships and our vetting units and TCIUs in Mexico, uh, which is, you know, that's ground zero from where China is sending the precursor chemicals. Uh, and FY22, HSI, in close coordination with our, our Mexican partners, seized 3.3 3, seized 3 .3 million pounds of precursor chemicals. We know those were all sort of headed to, to, to the U.S. Uh, we, we seized 22,000 or 21,000 pounds of fentanyl in FY22. And this year in FY23 through February, we've already seized 27 pounds, 27,000 pounds of, of fentanyl. So, you know, th there's a lot of work to be done. HSI is, 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 I mean, it's a high priority for them. And we'll continue to work with our foreign partners to, uh, to sort of increase our, our, our apprehensions. I know we're out of time, Mr. Chairman, but I just want to say that I, I believe that all those big numbers, and that's great that we're confiscating that much. I, I, my feeling is that that's probably the tip of the iceberg, yeah. and there's so much more that we, we've got to do. So I look forward to working with you on this and uh, getting a handle on this huge, huge issue. Thank you. Thank you.